Hello YouTube viewers. Welcome to my show Rocket Monday. In today's episode we're going to take a look at Deep Space Gateway or basically the replacement for ISS which has been recently renamed to LOBG Lunar Orbital Platform Gateway. So let's dive right into it. So what it is it's a replacement for ISS as many of you can see this is the most expensive thing ever built by human. like this is more expensive than large hadron collider this is more expensive than everything ever built by human the most expensive thing now it was not built single handedly it was not like america built it alone there has been serious amount of collaboration with a lot of other countries including uh rosmono which is from russia that is the second biggest contributor then jaxa japanese space agency then we have uh, csa canadian space agency then we have esa european space agency so it this thing was a collaborative effort nobody could have built it alone now you might have been able to build the technology but the co cost of it was so damn high that no alone space uh, faring nation could do it so iss that's why iss is going for so long it's like so many country has invested so much into it that it will be there for a while but only for a while it's showing its age and it's about to be decommissioned in next 10 to 20 years now what we are uh, planning to replace it with is a space station that will be in cis lunar orbit basically think of it around the moon only difference being it's not at the orbit of moon basically this is earth this is moon so it's not orbiting the moon it's orbiting the moon like this basically between the lagrange points the benefit of doing that it has very little gravitational pull so if they launch something from that space station to somewhere else it will take very little energy simply because it's no longer being affected by the gravity of moon so that's a very weird orbit that they are aiming for but it has its own benefits so it's a replacement for iss it will be you know the core aspect of it is it's going to be outside of earth's magnetosphere now geostationary sa satellites are literally almost outside of it but iss altitude was very specifically chosen so it can be below as much as a magnetic shield as possible so for that reason it, the altitude was kept at like 400 kilometers from sea level now of course if we want to build a space station we need a launch system for it now right now the biggest candidate for it is this space launch system sls it's built by nasa and this is supposed to be the replacement for uh, space shuttle because space shuttle failed miserably so they have went back to the design of uh, basically saturn 5 rocket but whatever worked in uh, space shuttle like the engine the engines that you see on this is literally exactly the same engine that was used for space shuttle so those engines are uh, kind of flawless so we have tested the engines and we still have uh, some engines remaining because uh, for space shuttle project there was uh, over they overbuilt it as in like they're supposed to be 10 to 20 shuttles built and in reality they only built 7 to 8 So we have a lot of engines, uh, you know, stocked and ready to be used, and they're gonna improve the engine a little bit so they'll get more thrust out of it. So SLS, it's basically Saturn V. Instead of using kerosene in their base engine, they are using hydrogen. Benefit of hydrogen: lot of specific impulse, lot of final velocity. Basically, the delta V that you will get using liquid hydrogen is much higher than what you will get from liquid kerosene. Consequence: it does not have enough thrust. That's why. we have solid boosters now solid booster is literally the same from uh, space shuttle era only thing they are doing is they are upgrading the stages like uh, not stages segments as in it used to have four segments now it will have one extra segment so this is their new vehicle that's supposed to do the job like actually getting the payload off the ground now there have been a lot of rumor that bfr might play this role and it may be because uh, trump administration once they signed this it's not like only national agency will do it it's also like private company will uh, compete for this so for instance let's say jeff bezos blue origin can provide cheaper launch cost they will go with that if uh, bfr provides cheaper launch cost they will go with bfr so these two are also competing however none of them are anywhere near as completion as this is and sls it's uh, built uh, with lot of knowledge from saturn project and space shuttle project so what they are building here the first block as in that's why uh, it's the same as a block in spacex uh, falcon 9 series the blocks they are building is going to get upgraded so the first block will barely do 90 tons to low earth orbit then the second will do uh, 
130 there are many blocks and those designs are not finalized yet so once they build the first block then they will upgrade the interstage then they're gonna upgrade other things so there is a lot of room to grow so this system that's why uh, there are gonna be many versions of this so these are the launch vehicle for this platform so what is the station itself now you have to understand it has its own propulsion module now because the orbit is not very um, simple it's not a very simple orbit. it needs a lot of correction now uh, international space station also needs a lot of correction it uses the propulsion that was either in space shuttle or a uh, russian cost uh, capsule modules basically it needs a lot of like many tons of fuel per year just to keep it in orbit because the atmospheric drag is so damn high that it will uh, fall within two three years if it uh, you know doesn't reboost itself this however uh, will suffer something similar now it won't be because of atmosphere it will be because of other things like uh, uh, many other things could play a role like a gravitational tug from moon or gravitational attraction from other celestial bodies and not to mention flat out other things like solar wind and other that so it has its own propulsion module built into it which will be working on ion propulsion this was a very important lesson learned from space station that you should build uh, its own uh, reboosting engine into it so that's the first module that will be launched second it has better radiation shielding many of you might be thinking why not just send the space shuttle uh, space station there the problem with iss is not built to be um, you know handle the radiation that happens outside of van allen belt basically the radiation belt that there is because of radi uh, radiation that is trapped into the magnetosphere outside of that inside it we are safe in it we are dead outside it the radiation that is coming from uh, vacuum space is very dangerous iss wasn't built with the structure to handle that kind of radiation this from day one is being properly built so it can handle the radiation iss taught it what happens to human body in uh, basically zero gravity now this will teach us what happens when you have zero gravity plus uh, space radiation cosmic radiation gamma radiation alpha beta gamma everything would be there so it's it's being built from ground up to handle that level of radiation now crucial aspect this is very small compared to iss it's very small it has only four modules uh, propulsion cargo and things like that logistic module is also there so this as you can see like and this thing that you're seeing this is orion module this is what uh, nasa's space shuttle replacement is people will be uh, traveling in this so what are the pros of this system well it's a uh, basically we have learned what happens to human body in low gravity system but we have no idea how cosmic radiation interacts with human body can human body handle it can human body regenerate from it can human body be permanently damaged because of it we have no idea like you can run all the simulation all the study you can do but at the end you have to send a human so this is that idea and if anything goes drastically wrong let's say some person gets a heart attack or something happens something very serious uh, evacuating from there is super easy like three days barely and it can support missions on the surface of the moon now the reason why uh, this system is being considered rather than directly going to the mars is nasa learned a lot from iss international space station now they want to go a step ahead but they don't directly want to jump to mars so from 2020s to 2030s to 40s they're gonna focus on this lunar system they're gonna gain a lot more experience about uh, radiation very specifically it's cosmic radiation and they're gonna learn uh, how that uh, ion propulsion system will work for months and months and months or sometimes flat out years and what effects it has on human body so this is a stepping stone to mars it itself is nothing new it, it's uh, not you know groundbreaking but it is a stepping stone that's why it was the older name it had was deep space gateway like it will unlock abilities like uh, asteroid mining could be done if this is built properly so this is, are the pros of it now many people many people including astronauts from nasa itself said this is the most stupid thing that ever came out of nasa and the reason for that it's very half measure there is nothing like for billions of dollars that are gonna be spent on this you're not gonna get anything out of it this is half measure now if they had built the space station and they were like okay we're gonna spin it like to create centrifugal gravity that could have taught us how much uh, how little centrifugal force do we need to survive properly like ideally you want 1g but to get 1g you have to rotate it very fast or you have to make it very big now uh, the space station itself can uh, right now we don't have the technology to build it very big but we could have uh, gone in a scenario skylab was 
sp uh, spun up to get, uh, generate gravity. In this, we could have easily tested that system, but they are not doing it. So, all they are doing is making sure the astronauts die quicker because of lack of gravity. And it's not a frontier. Like, if we can, in 1950s to 80s, if we can uh, imagine and actually go to moon, why we are going to the lunar orbit? There is no tangible benefit. Now, you might be like, okay, we can jump from there to Mars? No, you can't do that simply because the station does not have fuel. That is the second most stupid part. Like, if they had landed on the moon itself, they could have figured out how to do what's called in situ space uh, resource utilization. Basically, make rocket fuel or oxygen or water, whatever they need to survive on the surface based on the solar panels. Basically, solar uh, radiation here is very high and your solar panels will work 24 into 7 because some places it has that has perpetual sunlight. So, instead of that, instead of uh, building a place where you can refuel rocket, they built an orbit, uh, in outer orbit. And if you might be like, if you go to there, then go to Mars, you are wasting a lot of Delta V. There is no tangible benefit of that. Like you will be better off if you directly went from Earth. And we, we might gonna use that method rather than directly, you know, going to uh, moon orbit and then going there, you are adding upwards of few days to few months uh, to journey time. So it's flat out stupendous. If they were on the surface, however, then they could have learned how to build habitats. Because we haven't built habitats here, we cannot actually go to Mars and live there for long term. For that long term study, we need to know how to build habitats. And it is at a stage where it has no actual benefit. Like tangibly, we cannot learn how to do in situ utilization. We cannot learn how to make habitats. We do not know what ha happens to human body in low gravity environment. Now, you might say ISS in low gravity. Yes, ISS is at 88% of Earth's gravity. The gravity experienced by ISS is 88%, but because it's in orbit, because it's in free falling, it experiences zero G. So people inside dies upwards of, uh, you have, if you stay there for two to three years, your body will be compromised beyond repairable abilities. Basically, if you come back from three to four years in space, then you come back to Earth, you will be having very hard time walking and your organs might be compromised beyond repairable limits. So we have no idea. And if we stand there like on the surface we might have learned how little of gravity human body needs to work properly people would have been able to sleep properly because in space sleeping is very difficult people can't sleep properly because their uh, rhythms are not working properly they basically uh, they have to sedate themselves like a low level sedation or like a, it's almost knocking yourself out to trying to sleep and they sleep in bags like here you can actually stay like the astronauts will be live longer if they went in the moon if they are on the moon and they cover them cover the habitat which we have to do on mars or on moon if we want to do long-term stay we will figure it out like we will figure out how much uh, thickness the regular has to be in order to provide adequate shielding is one meter enough two meter enough so basically this whole station inherently serves no actual function it's not very big it's if it was centrifuge based like if it was rotating we could have re uh, because now we know that low gravity will kill people what's the point of having low gravity again like you want to understand what happens to astronaut body using cosmic radiation awesome we need to know that we need to understand that for humanity to move forward but you're not doing that you are doing it what happens with coordinates regime plus the low weightness maybe human body flat out breaks out now they say there is a potential that uh, this might overwhelm us humans ability to uh, you know regenerate like our body heals from damages it may do that Again, why you are adding extra complications to people's life? There is no benefit of it. We cannot go to moon, then go to Mars without uh, wasting time. And you are not building fuel there, so there is no tangible benefit of doing that. And I like the BFR's idea where they're gonna refuel it in orbit and then go. Just, just go. Don't waste time to go, trying to go to the moon. And of course, then you also have to plan your orbit based on uh, where moon is. So all things considered, this is inherently half ass. Like there is no, this should be built second. Like this should be the second thing. Like first thing should be the lunar base. Then you might have built that and you will be like, okay, if humans needs to, you know, direct access, then that might have served a function. But we have already the technology to land on moon, to figure things out on moon. We have moon rovers for crying out loud. So doing this is so half ass. Like it has no tangible benefit other than the fact that it's gonna teach us how quickly cosmic radiation plus low gravity kills human. So this was the stupidity aspect of it. I hope you liked the presentation and learned from it. In that case, please like. If you didn't, no worry about it, dislike it and leave a comment what we're gonna see in the next episode of Rocket Monday. 
and uh, i will suggest you subscribe and press the bell icon as i make video every day and as always thanks for watching